Uh, yeah, it feels great. Um, you know, tricky match point. The ball was only just out, but I think it was more relief that uh, you know it went out. So uh, yeah, it was a great feeling. Um, you could see it on my face at the end of the match. I was uh, you know, overcome with uh, with joy. <clears throat> Yes. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Here, Stefan Sorrento for WeAreTennis.com. Uh, I got a question about the biggest upsets, upsets of your career. Um, which upset gives you uh, the best emotions between Andy Murray in 2017 and now against City Bus? Uh, yeah, um, actually can't, couldn't tell you the difference. Um, you know, both um, probably equal. Uh, that day against Andy Murray was probably a little bit unexpected because I was a lucky loser and um, yeah, happened just to play a, an unbelievable match and I wasn't even supposed to be in the draw and today uh, was a little bit different. Um, you know, I'd been on a bit of a run of matches and you know, I felt confident. Um, even even playing against a, you know, a top 10 player, I, I felt uh, comfortable in my own skin and what I was doing and um, just snuck out a win. So, um, you know, it, it feels unbelievable as well. Um, yeah, they're two of my favorite victories. <clears throat> oh, Joel Drucker, Tennis.com. Um, you both bring a lot of energy to your tennis. What's, uh, talk about the emotions you bring when you're playing a match with a, with a first set tiebreaker and then a decisive tiebreaker. Yeah, I think a third set tiebreaker is a little bit more um, nerve wracking. Um, you know, the first the first tiebreaker, uh, you know, won seven points in a row and just, um, you know, I guess caught him while he was napping. So, um, I knew that wasn't going to be the case in the third set. I mean, it was a tight match. It was over, you know, probably over two and a bit hours. So um, I think it, when it comes down to a third set tiebreaker, I don't think the third one's going to be uh, uh, a seven love one either. So um, yeah, hung tough, and I think um, yeah, I think it did get to five all and won the last two points. And he only just missed two forehands, but um, yeah, it could have gone either way. And thankful it went my way. Yeah, just more on that third set breaker. Um, He's pumping up the crowd, you know, get waving his arms around. There's a bunch of Greek flags out there. There's also some Aussie voices come from the crowd. Just what's going through your head? You know, how are you? Are you tuning in on people yelling your name? Are you tuning out the people cheering for him? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I actually started kind of laughing when he was doing that. I mean, it, it, not that it was funny that he was doing it. It's more the fact that, uh, you know, we probably want to be in those situations. And the same thing happened last year in the quarterfinal quarterfinals of Davis Cup um, I think I was serving for the match 5-3 in the third set against um, against Greekspoor and uh, the crowd started going nuts and actually started smiling as well I thought there's probably I want to be in these positions and um, you know I'm, I'm enjoying the battle so um, it's probably better better to be that way than not. Jordan congrats well done um, I don't know how to put this but you know you're Australian you have to travel from down under you're now I think you're 28, if I have it right, and all these matches, big venues, small venues. Is, can you share with us one real, your most bizarre story of the years on the tour? That is there anything that you can share with us? Uh, I don't know if anything's really gone too wrong. I mean, for some reason lately, uh, my bags go missing. Um, that's quite frustrating. I mean. Davis Cup, we, we did a train, training week and I think my bags went missing twice and got back to America, bags went missing again. Um, so lately it's just the bag goes missing and it, you know, it doesn't allow you to practice, it doesn't allow you to practice or if you're not home you can't really change your clothes. So that's, it's a disaster. But uh, yeah, nothing really too bizarre. <clears throat> did it, the bags turn up? Always, yeah. How soon? Usually within a couple of days, so it's not it's not too bad. But if you're preparing for a tournament, it is a disaster. Would it happen here? No. no. <laughs> yeah, just final word on your confidence level after such a big win today going forward. And you just won a challenger, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, you know, a little bit of a slow start to the year. Um, played a challenger a couple of, couple of weeks ago and won that. Um, you know, I think I won every match in straight sets, and uh, it was good to get those matches under my belt. And then came here and you know had a tricky. Got a tricky draw, and um, you know I've come through it. But I think a lot of the matches helped, and just felt comfortable on the match court, and got match fit, and 
yeah, there's no replacement for matches. Last question. Um, the Australian tradition, tennis tradition, of course, is so rich. Um, can you just say what's the best part of it? Uh, is what, what, how it really sort of empowers you, helps you uh, as, as a player? Um, not really sure. I mean, every, I think every Aussie wants to do Australia proud. And, um, you know, we can all, we can go nuts sometimes, but I can assure you always, generally, the majority of the time we're, we're trying our balls off to win. And, um, yeah, I mean, when I know when I go out there, I, I give 100% every time. I know I can, you know, complain and get a little bit angry, but it never stops me from compete, competing my hardest. And that's all I want to do. And I think uh, generally that's an Australian quality. Does, does Leighton get you going in Davis Cup? Does he fire you up? Yeah, of course. I mean, when he's on the bench and, you know, he, he probably gets more rowdy than we do. But, um, yeah, it's good to know that he still cares and, you know, he wants the best for us as well and the best for Australian tennis. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,